Hello, welcome. My name is Henry Waters, and if this is your first time in this channel, you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I guess you are missing a lot. Just hit that red subscribe button and turn on the notification icon bell so when I release new video, you'll be the first to get the notification. Okay, all right. In my previous tutorial, I taught you how to make user registration form with email verification and Google recapture version 2 in order to check uh, if the user is a human being or a robot. That's why we needed to integrate google recapture all right so if you have not watched that video yet please click on this link above and watch it then you can come back and continue with the login all right today's tutorial topic is user login form with validation in php all right before i start i'm going to show you my starter files like i always do okay the new included files for this user login form in php which also has a remember me feature is what just the login form, the logout PHP file, the login file, the logout PHP file, and if you open this new folder, login has got dashboard, the user hyphen index. Okay, that's where the user will be logged in once they log in successfully. Okay, so let's get to the code right away. This is my login.php file, and the form has a bootstrap class. Okay, I'll quickly run through to explain what I have there. Okay, so this is my form with action empty, meaning that the, once the form is submitted, the script will be read in the same file. Okay, you can as well put login.php inside there, but I will usually leave it empty. All right, so um, the first field is the email address, which has a name, index name of email, okay, with value of what cookie. That's if the cookie is being set. The reason why I have this is because of the remember me feature, okay, which we use to store the user's email and password in the browser using cookie. So if the cookie is set, it will uh, echo it here as well as the password, okay, having an index name of what password. Then the checkbox, which is here, will also echo uh, checked. If the cookie email name is being set, all right, so that's what I have there. Then, lastly, this is the login uh, button with name submit. Okay, I will show you my database. Okay, the same database with table name of what username and database name of what user underscore registration as I have before. All right, this is the account I created in my previous tutorial. Okay, which I've already verified. All right, so let's uh, dive into our tutorial now. So the first thing we're going to do here is to start our session with what session underscore start function and include our database connection, okay, which is in a database folder, mydb.php. All right, then I'm going to have a custom function, I'll call it redirect to login page. Okay. Then my code there will be what header function then location. This is where the user will be, will be redirected. Okay, once they made a successful login. To the users underscore index dot php file okay login underscore dashboard folder then the user iphone index dot php i can as well just pass a string there just to show that they logged in successfully login success it will show in the url then exit function okay so now i'm going to check if uh, the session email is being set okay so that i can automatically log in the user to the dashboard the user's dashboard we'll be checking it with the email so if session is set already here I will now call the redirect to login page function. All right, meaning that this script will run. This redirect to login page function is coming from here. That's the name. All right. 
So next thing up now is to okay. I'm going to define uh, my error message variable. Call it h m s g. Okay, with an empty uh, variable, empty string. Okay, I've already done this here. This is where the errors will be echoing. Right then, next thing up now, I'm going to use an if statement to check if the button submit is being pushed. Okay, having the post parameter of submit, that's the index name. Then I'm going to define my variable, call it email. All right. Then my SQLI underscore real escape string function. In order to avoid SQL injection or attack in our database, pass the database connection variable, then the post parameter. So for the email, the index name word is what email as we have in the form. Okay, I've showed you. So the name is what email. Then I'll copy this. I'll do the same for password. Variable name, password, the index name here is what password. All right. So now I'm going to check if um, if the if the email and password is empty. So I'm just going to uh, clean this curly bracket. So to do that, I'm going to call the variable email if it's equal to what empty string. That's if the user didn't enter anything. Okay, this is a way a way of validating it. Or if the password is what is equal to what empty. Then if that condition is true, then I'll append the error message with bootstrap div classes to the message variable. Okay, I'm already have it there. I'll pick it up and paste it. All right. So else else statement with a curly bracket. So next thing I'm going to do here is to um, fetch the email password, email underscore status, check the status from a database where the email the user entered, okay, using this email. So variable name of what SQL defined it then, database connection, then the arrow will assess the word this query function okay here i will now be having my uh, my sql statement with what select id password these are the index name i have in my database okay then email underscore status that's the major thing i need there okay i need to fetch um the password that is in the database, if it tallies with the password the user is entering, and also check the email underscore status. I will also check if uh, the user verified their email. If it is not verified, it has a what a zero value in the database. Where what? So select this from users where email is equal to arch email all right this arch email is coming from here okay all right so next thing up i'm going to have an if statement passing the sql variable then to check the number underscore rules function if what was fetch is greater than zero that means if uh, the email where email is equal to, has email if it's greater than zero that means 
it exists okay that email address exists in the database then we'll define a new variable call it data sql then fetch function fetch underscore array function okay um so i'm going to use an if statement now to verify our password then so i'll use a function called password password underscore verify okay i'll pass the password variable then the hash okay the hash here represent what was fetched from what the database that's what is going to verify it with this arch password this arch password is coming from what the user entered and the second parameter has the hashed password in our database so remember the variable that was fetched is what data arch data so arch data index name of what password that's what i have in my database okay so i will check again another condition then if statement i'm going to remove this one call a bracket i don't need it so i'm going to check um the email status okay email status if it is equal to zero remember in my previous tutorial okay i already verified my email that's why i have one here if you watch it where i taught you the user registration form i have one here if it was not verified it will be zero so i'm going to check if it is zero that's why i have if it is close to zero all right then if that condition is true then i'll append my error message here so the text will be what please verify your email address to activate your account all right that's what i have there so next thing up i'm going to do now is to check um uh, i'm going to check if the user uh, push this uh, checkout uh, box okay so i'm going to use a statement called else 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 then if if it's not empty that means if it is not checked if it is not empty that means if it is checked sorry empty function then the post variable of what remember remember is that the index name let me be sure so this is where i have it the name is what remember me remember underscore me okay remember underscore me save that so what i'll do here is now to set our cookie because according to this condition if it is not empty like i explained earlier so to set the condition we use the word set cookie function right the set cookie function has three parameters first one is the name the second one is the value and the third one expiring date i think yeah so the name is what the first thing we will be setting is what the email with name email then um, the value is what arch email okay this arch email is coming from here then the 
the expiring dates, I will use the time function, time function plus 30, meaning 30 days times 24, 24 hours times 60 minutes by another 60 minutes. Okay, that's what that means. So I've set the cookie for the email. I'll do the same for the password. Okay, so I'll change this towards the password. And the variable password. All right. Else. Else. Else, that means if it is empty, we will now set an empty cookie. Okay, so this is this will be empty. This will also be empty. All right, so that what that, that's what that means. Then, um, since all conditions are right, then here, this is where I will now log the user in with section. Here, I will include session user here. So, I'll be adding the section in the email. Okay, so I'll define a variable email session variable index name email. All right, then log log user in that's the next thing up so to log the user in i will call this this function redirect to login page function just paste that there okay so um let me check my so this curly bracket closed here okay then else Else, um, our message error will be what? Okay, remember my here closed here. So else will be is either the user entered wrong email address or password. Okay, so I'll just copy this error. Bootstrap class message alert. Sorry. Then change the text to what? You entered wrong email email or password. Okay, that's what it is. You enter wrong email. Use our password. Okay, if I scroll up now and check where this close, where I search if the email exists. Okay, it closed here. Then I can also have an else statement again. Else, okay, um, that means, um, as an error okay i'll just paste that there because this condition which closed here okay check if the email address exists in the database so the error message could also be enter wrong email or password all right i can just say please check your Imputes, all right. So that is it. All right. Then next thing, I'm going to move over to my user index. All right. Okay. This place is where the user will be logged into. Okay. Then what I will do here is to start section again. That's the first thing you should do. Session underscore start. 
load my database connection once more then I'm going to check if the no session started okay using an if statement if there is no session a set function session in the email okay if there's no session in the email then I will just uh, redirect the user back to login page all right so location location will be what login dot php The reason why I have this dot dot forward slash login dot php is because the user hyphen index dot php file is in the login underscore dash dashboard folder. Okay, this is where it is. So in order to assess uh, this login, which is which is outside this uh, folder, you need to put that dot dot forward slash. Okay. So next thing there is to add a die or exit function whichever one you prefer okay so that's so this means if it's not set session email if it is not set redirect the user to what login.php page okay uh, i need to put the dot dot for slash in the database connection here okay because of where this file is then i think i omitted something here as well since we are including our session, we are pending it to the email. Um, we need to do this the other way around. We need to do the section with index name of email equal to arch email. Okay, it looks much better like this. All right, so next thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to fetch the, uh, the user's uh, last name and first name from the database. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to use an if statement now. If a set function with session variable of index name of email. Okay, if that condition is true, then I will append this email variable to session underscore email. email okay so that is it so now I'm going to use an SQL to fetch uh, to fetch the first name and the last name from our database now okay archcon database connection query function then our statement SQL statement is what select last name um, first name from where users okay from users okay from this table users all right so that is where we are fetching from where email is equals to what the defined variable email so where this email which is here is equals to what as email the session email which we appended all right so that's what that means okay i'm going to use a limit now limit one okay this means once it finds this email it doesn't have to search through all other records okay because this is supposed to have a a lot of users that have created an account so once it's find this email it will just stop just to facilitate our code it's a good practice so next up is I'm um, going to check if it exists all right so XPA variable assess the number underscore row function okay if it is not equals to zero that means if it exists you can as well use if it is greater than zero whichever one that you prefer 
then I will now use a while loop okay while loop with a variable of what call it rows then arch SQL uh, access uh, I'll now use the fetch underscore as sock function to fetch the data all right so fetch underscore as sock function So then I'm now define the last name. So these rows will have what last name. Do the same for what first name. First name. All right. So this variable will be echoing it here. Okay, where I have the user full name, I will show you this in my browser. Okay, this is the user full name, so I will just echo that there. All right, so I'll use I'll open my my PHP tag. Let's say echo arch, maybe the first one last name, right? Concatenate that okay with an empty string so that it will have a, a left space here so that the name will have space once it has been echoed. Then first name, all right. Then close my tag. Then remember this logout the URL is here, okay, which the dot dot for slash logout.php so you can be able to read this file so once this is clicked if the user wants to log out i will first of all start the session again in order to destroy session you need to start it so session underscore starts <coughs> then session underscore destroy function then header function location where you want the user to be redirected. I want the user to go to back to login page if he or she has logged out. All right, then exit function. So that is just it. So I'm going to head over to my browser now to text our code. So I'm going to refresh this. It's looking good. So if I push this login button, it says email or password cannot be empty. Good. Then I'll add my email address, maybe wrong password. Then click on login. You entered wrong email or password. So whichever way you do it, for example, okay, let me enter wrong email, then the right password. What does it say? You enter wrong email or password please check your input okay just like as i have uh here <coughs> sorry here so it's properly validated <coughs> so i'm going to log in now to be sure i will be logged in properly okay if i click on login yes i've logged in successfully see it echoes my last name and also my first name according to what i have in my database all right so if you have gotten value uh, to this tutorial refresh this the same please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also subscribe if you have not so that you will be able to get my notification on my next videos all right so if i click on log out now it will log me out so even if i copy this paste it right here okay even if i copy the uh, the login the user dashboard okay index dot php all right if I have that, um, 
refresh this i will still be logged out okay i will still be redirected to back to login page so that's what i have here all right so if the user tries to access that page all right so i can also log in with the remember me feature okay okay it will keep the user logged in for 30 days that's what i have in my script okay the cookie is saved for 30 days until the user will be logged out. so if i click on login now as you can see i'm logged in all right <coughs> so even if i close it and come back to that page again i will still be logged in even up to up till up to 30 days then i'll be automatically logged out all right so if you got value please like this video share it to your friends and stick with me the next stage of this tutorial will be forgot password i'll teach you how guys how to uh do a forgot password script all right i will see you guys on the next one bye bye